Hey guys, this is Jordi from forward3dprinting.com. Today I want to talk to you about belts. Most of you thought you people out there are uncomfortable already because your pants won't be hanging down your ankles. However, I'm talking about GT2 timing belt. This one is made out of rubber. Most of you are already very familiar with it. It's the easiest one you can find anywhere. This bad boy is reinforced with steel. All right, it also has, um, uh, the, the rubber itself is harder, so it has less play. However, it's mostly the, uh, the actual wire in the inside that does it. So, I peeled this out so you can see these fibers right here are called Kevlar. Those are the same fibers that we put in a bulletproof vest to stop a bullet. And the way that it does it is because the fiber is so strong and it's weaved together with a resin that when the bullet hits, it basically does not displace the fiber. So the fiber is that strong. So it works like a charm. However, it's still rubber around it. So this still has a stretch. When you program your machine, let's say 80 steps per millimeter, the most common for the pulleys and the GT2 belts that come together when you buy them, uh, 80 steps per millimeter, it's, you know, most Prusa machines or so on, or the GT2 belt. However, your GT2 belt, once you tie the model, it actually stretches. So you're not getting 80 steps per millimeter. So my answer to that was same as Prusa's one, steel woven belts. So with that, that being said, this video wasn't about that at all. This video was about how to properly tighten the belts on any machine that actually uses belts. Now I'm using a Prusa because that's my expertise, my favorite machines. However, this will should work right about every machine as long as you keep what I'm about to tell you in, in mind. If you go and where you're gonna do this is called the swing method, or that's what I call it. Again, it's the Prusa method because that's where I learned it. This method will work with any type of mount for your motors, doesn't really matter. It also will work with any capturing method for your belt, either you have self-capturing or if you're still using the zip ties, right? So, doesn't matter. So, let's go ahead and get started. If you have a motor that is on four, which I've never seen one like that, on four volts, uh, you're gonna have to remove three, closest on the frame to the top or the bottom where you can swing it, right? So what you want to do is you want to remove, in this case you have three on the Prusa, I'm going to go ahead and remove these two right here. You notice I removed one and just to show you which ones are to be removed, I'm going to go ahead and remove them both. What about that? All right, so you can see now it's free. So now what you want to do is you want to push it as far as you can go on the Prusa. If you have a different machine that doesn't have anything for you to take as a measurement, you don't want to pass 11 degrees or 12 degrees. If you go farther than that, when you tighten the back of the motor, you will actually risk for either start putting too much pressure in the shaft or you can even actually make the rods bent. So you don't want to do any of that, you don't want any bindings. All right, so now that you have swing your motor, you're going to make this belt snug. I'm not saying tight. I'm saying snug, okay? You wanna make sure that there's a little lag on the left. I mean, you can tighten up as much as you can without pliers or putting a lot of pressure. Let me say it that way to make it so simple. All right, so now you're gonna capture your belt. Now that my belt is completely captured, in your case, if you have zip ties, again, just capture it like that, and you notice it's snug. It's enough where I can still move it without losing steps, even as fast, even as it's loose, right? And now, as left foot on it, just gonna swing it back as hard as you can. It takes a little strength. And you're gonna put your screws back on it. And now, make sure you tie both of them in before you let go of the motor. A lot of people get problems with, they start letting go and it's over pressure, so make sure that you don't let go until it's ready. And now, ta-da! Okay, the bottom one doesn't clank, it's because it's actually captured. So, that's pretty much it. I forgot to tell you, again, you can order this from AliExpress. This belt is way better than this belt. 
if you're still using this belt, the method still works. Now, I wanted to give you one last thing before I left, just so you realize how strong the belt is compared to these ones, these ones, right? I'm gonna grab some nips. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna grab some nip nose pliers and I'm gonna use the wire cutting. So I'm gonna grab the belt and I'm gonna put it right there. You guys see it? And I'm just gonna use these wire cutters. Sorry, these pliers cut. You heard it. The belt came off. Now, I'm gonna try the same concept with this little belt. I can sit here for a while, nothing's gonna happen because I peeled it off already. I used these things to peel it off and none of the threads came out. And now I'm gonna use my trusty nips, right? And now, listen, cause you're not gonna hear. If you heard that crunching sound, I still haven't gone through all of the threads. And I have to put a lot of pressure on it. So there it goes. That's the difference. These belts were about $10 per 10 meters, which is super cheap because it's about the same average that you pay for these. Uh, this one you can find a lot easier, of course, they're rarely available. But these ones right here I found on AliExpress, as I say, and they were super cheap and they came quite fast. Anyways, I'm done here. Isn't that cool? So I'm done here. So whatever you do, work it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. And keep your surface clean. Keep on 3D printing. See you guys later.